I, I wonder if you got a sense um, about where the future of this sort of semiotic presentation might go if this space continues to be uh, sort of restricted or, or avenues are limited to the more sort of uh, ethnicized presentations that you see uh, as a part of the uh, policy. Uh, in China? In China. Uh, yeah, or elsewhere. Uh, well, I think that people will just revert, oscillate slightly more to Urfi thinking. Mm. Uh, uh, that is localized customs and culture. They will be the, the they will just sort of like uh, try to create ways of expressing uh, uh, religion more through that lens, as 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 they have. Um, for example, on this slide, you can see the Songjiang Mosque in Shanghai, Chinese calligraphy alongside, on par, on equal footing with uh, Arabic calligraphy. Uh, you find very few places in the world where you will see the local language written calligraphically alongside Arabic, any mosque in any world, city in the world. But you see it a lot in China. I think that's really interesting that it's unequal. I mean, it would be nice if we had English calligraphy next to Arabic calligraphy in a mosque. Maybe that would be our like come homecoming, perhaps. <laughs> but they've done it in China, maybe with a little bit of coercion along the way. But, uh, um, but how, how do I see it playing out? Um, I don't know is the, is the answer. We'll just see more adaptations, more creative adaptations. Of course, uh, it varies from place to place. Uh, you don't have those restrictions in Shanghai, but you have them in other places. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, linguistically, I mean, r religions are extremely resilient things. You know, uh, they, Christianity under the Roman Empire, etc. So uh, uh, they're extremely resilient. And so really, uh, I'm quite optimistic about how linguistically there'll always be work to do. You know, there'll be no shortage of ideas of the things to me to research as well as to do. Yeah, I agree with him uh, because uh, we can see adaptations everywhere. <coughs> I mean, in the UK, the Muslims adapt themselves in the local culture. Mm -hmm. And in China, it's the same. We had a uh, few participants uh, saying that no matter what the policy is, we just be ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, if things come to us, we adapt to it, and uh, just life is going on. <laughs> Money also plays a big role. Qingzhen <coughs> business is huge, as you write about in your book. Yes. It's huge. So that sometimes, if you don't have a heritage language, and you can't ring fence and protect your heritage through language, you've got to do it through business, or intangible cultural heritage, or within any of those spheres where you can get some kind of uh, uh, legitim legitimation uh, and uh, protection, as it were. Uh, so yeah. And also with one belt, one road, and with connections around that the country has with other Muslim-dominant nations and internationalization of universities with students coming from all over the Muslim world. It's just, it can't continue like that with, with all that happening. <laughs> <laughs>